G'day guys, how's it going? I'm Aaron Whitnell. This is ACW Sport and the Champions League group stages are officially over and wow, what a stage of the competition it was. We saw records broken this year. Firstly, because we saw more goals scored in the group stages than ever before, a whopping 306. And of course, when it comes to the English sides, they also made history for the, because for the first time in history, all five teams from the same nation have actually gone through to the knockout stages. It's never happened before, mainly because, of course, the most that you normally get is only four sides. But, of course, with Man United winning the Europa League last year, they also got into the Champions League. So it is, for the first time in history, five teams from the same nation in the knockout stages. And when it comes to the English sides, for me, there was only one place to start, and that is at Anfield, where Liverpool won 7-0 for the second time in the group stages. This time, destroying Spartak Moscow, getting the win they absolutely needed to get to finish top of the group and qualify. Um, and Liverpool have now set their own record for English sides in the competition by becoming the highest scorers in a group stage for an English side, scoring a whopping 23 goals. And what makes it even better for Liverpool is that the team that previously held that record were Manchester United with 21 goals. So Liverpool have not only scored more goals than any other team in English history in the group stage, but they have also beating their rivals or arch rivals with that record as well. But uh, yeah, it was a phenomenal game to say the least. So many of Liverpool's attacking players were brilliant. Coutinho scoring his first hat-trick for Liverpool. Um, Salah added again onto the score sheet. He's now scored 18 goals in all competitions. That's more than any other player playing in the Premier League. Um, and when you look at Mane's volley, it was just absolutely exceptional. It couldn't have been a better night for Liverpool. And I'll tell you what, I fancy Liverpool against anyone in the knockout stages. I know the defence is a bit leaky, but they've got such an incredible attack that I think they can catch anyone out on the counter-attack in devastating fashion. Um, anyway, moving on to uh, the other English sides. Manchester City were actually beaten for the first time this season um, at Shakhtar Donetsk. Uh, they lost for first time in 28 games as well, which is, you know, it was a great run. All right, it didn't really matter that they lost this game. They were already qualified. They made a few changes, to say the least. Um, and Shakhtar's first goal was absolutely exceptional. Wonderful curling effort from Bernard. Uh, no goalkeeper would have really had a chance with it, I don't think. Um, but you do have to question what the hell Edison, the goalkeeper, was doing for the second goal that Shakhtar scored. Completely in no man's land, and he missed the ball completely. Um, something that I'm sure Pep will want to make sure he doesn't do in the Manchester derby this weekend. But uh, yeah, overall, didn't really matter for City. They were through, and it was just a fairly... Yeah, it was, just, it was, it was a defeat that didn't mean anything to say the least. Um, the other thing that kind of happened in that group that was quite big was that Napoli didn't actually qualify. Because Shakhtar beat City, it meant that Napoli couldn't get through. They also lost to Feyenoord, which didn't help their cause, um, despite taking the lead through their fastest ever Champions League goal, which was scored in just under two minutes. Feyenoord turned it around, and Napoli's Champions League season has not gone according to plan, despite them doing so well in Serie A so far. But they will fancy themselves in the Europa League. And I'll tell you what, the Europa League is looking tasty this year with uh, who's qualified or who's dropped out of the Champions League into that competition as well. Arsenal are going to face some stiff competition, so there could be some good games in there as well. The yeah. other team in Manchester, Manchester United, they won 2-1 at home to CSK Moscow to cement their place at the top of the Champions League group. Um, it was great to see Lukaku and Rashford back on the score sheet for United. They end their goal droughts. Um, it was very much one-way traffic. CSK Moscow took the lead surprisingly right on the stroke of half-time. I missed a lot of confusion as well, but the goal should have stood, and it did. Um, but I think the other thing for United is that Pogba looks incredible, but also so does one matter when he's given a chance. And uh, I think in Pogba's absence, he could be the real player that steps up for United this weekend. I hope he gets the chance. I don't think he gets enough chances at Manchester United. Um, I never think he has, which is such a shame because I think he's such a wonderful player. But hopefully he's given a chance to shine this weekend in Derby while Pogba is banned. Um, elsewhere in that group, Basel, they confirm their second place uh, position by uh, beating Benfica 2-0 away from home. Um, Benfica become the first Portuguese side to lose all six of their Champions League group stage games. That's not a record you want. And it's such a shock because normally they're so good in the Champions League. Um, you expect them to at least qualify for the knockout rounds, but it's been a terrible, terrible campaign for them. Um, Chelsea, they drew 1-1 at home to Atletico. The points secured their place in the knockout stages. Um, elsewhere, Roma, they beat Karaborg 1-0 um, in that group. And, yeah, I mean, from a Chelsea perspective, it was it was a good game. Atletico pushed them. Atletico, though, big shock, them dropping out of the Champions League into the Europa League. Um, but they would fancy themselves for the Europa League, so we'll have to see what happens there. But, 
Now, Chelsea, again, to be honest with you, I wouldn't want, if I was a foreign team, I wouldn't want to face any of the English sides because they all look brilliant in the Champions League this season. And Chelsea, we've seen it in recent weeks where they've really started to turn their season around as well. They, when they're informed, they're almost unstoppable at times. They're really, really impressive, to say the least. Tottenham, they finished their Champions League group stage in just simple fashion, running out 3 0 winners at Wembley. Uh, against Nat Apoel. Um, Lorente has finally scored for Spurs, which is obviously massive for him. It was also his first goal in seven hours as well. So uh, hopefully that does him some confidence and he can finally start getting on the score sheet a bit more. And Kudu also scored his first goal for Spurs via a massive deflection. And Son as well with a beautiful left-footed curler. He's been so vital to Spurs in this group stage so far. Um, yeah, just kind of rounding off their Champions League campaign in the group stage anyway in style, and uh, they'll be relishing whoever they face in the, in the knockout round. Elsewhere, Real Madrid, they secured second spot in the group after beating Dortmund 3-2 at the Bernabeu. Absolute classic game, really. Real Madrid went 2-0 up early on. Cristiano Ronaldo becoming the first player um, to score in every single group stage game, and when you think he's having such a bad season domestically in front of goal, he's certainly been uh, firing on all cylinders in Europe. Um, but it was uh, Aubameyang who brought Dortmund back into it three t uh, in... Um, in the end, it was 2-2 um, up until Lucas then scored the winner for Real Madrid late on. But uh, yeah, wonderful dink finish from Aubameyang for his second goal. You can see why so many people regard him as one of the best strikers in the world. He is phenomenal when he's on form like that. Um, Celtic, they lost 1-0 at home to Anderlecht, but still managed to call themselves through to the Europa League. But uh, that was a disappointing home defeat, and they will be hoping they can do a lot better in the Europa League. Um, yeah, I think, I think they've got a, good, a decent chance of going fairly far. Um, it's just all down to how well they can perform at home. But if they play like they did against Anderlecht, then they'll get knocked out in the next round of the Europa League. But uh, hopefully that won't be the case. And then PSG lost for the second time in a week. Um, they lost 3-1 away at Bayern Munich, um, which means that no Champions League team or no team playing in the competition this year um, has gone undefeated so far. Every single team has lost at least one game, which makes it all very, very competitive to say the least. Um, Mbappe though he is still the star man for PSG even though Neymar is obviously their big money man there's just so much hype around Mbappe he became the youngest player ever to score 10 Champions League goals only 18 years old just to put that into perspective for you Lionel Messi was 21 when he did the same feat so uh, yeah Mbappe has got an incredibly incredibly exciting future ahead of him and then in the other two games Barcelona or other two groups sorry Barcelona they won 2-0 at home to uh, Sporting Lisbon sorry um, which saw Sporting Lisbon knocked out and into the Europa League because Juventus, they won 2 0 at uh, Olympiacos, which saw Olympiacos knocked out altogether. But fairly routine for the two big teams in that group. And then in the final group, uh, Besiktas, they cemented their place as uh, group winners in some fashion by beating Leipzig 2 1 away from home, um, ruining Leipzig's unbeaten run in the Champions League at home anyway. Um, but Besiktas showing that they are no mugs and um, for me they are a real dark horse going into this knockout stage I can see them creating a real upset somewhere along the lines and then Porto they cemented their place in second spot after beating and destroying Monaco 5-2 in the Stadio Dragão um, yeah Monaco have been absolutely abysmal um, in the Champions League this year uh, which is really weird when you consider how well they did last year I know they sold players but they've still got a strong team I mean, they're pushing PSG in, in uh, Ligue 1 but, uh, yeah, just very, very bizarre from them in this season's competition. Um, but, yeah, that pretty much sums up everything that happened in um, the group stage. In terms of who has got through to the knockout rounds, here is the last 16 for this year's competition. It's Real Madrid, Barcelona. You've also got Sevilla from Spain in there as well. Tottenham, Manchester United, Manchester City, Chelsea and Liverpool all from England. You've got Shakhtar, Basel, Porto, Besiktas, Paris Saint-Germain, Bayern Munich, um, Roma and Juventus, uh, the last 16 in the Champions League this season. So please comment below. Let me know what did you think of the match day round six for the group stages? What do you make of the last 16? Who do you think is going to go furthest? Um, and yeah, just let me know what your major talking points were. As always, I'm Aaron Whitnell. This has been ACW Sport. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys again tomorrow with my Premier League predictions for this coming weekend.